Hello everyone, uh, this is the pre-lab lecture component for bromination of e steel bean. Alright, so <clears throat> in the bromination of e steel bean, um, our reaction is fairly simple. We're going to have e steel bean, alright, so you can see a benzene ring, there's a two carbon bridge to the next benzene ring, and in particular this two carbon bridge does have our pi bond that we see here. Um, and so uh, by the addition of Br2, and I put here a, a note, no light. I don't want you guys to think that radicalization is taking place. There's no radicalization. So this is going to be just a straightforward addition reaction. Uh, well, I say straightforward, but it is an it is an addition reaction where we're going to add both bromines across that pi bond. And in particular, um, this addition reaction is specifically an anti addition reaction. All right, so how are you going to tell if something is an anti addition reaction? Well, look at the general layout of your reactant. And so you can kind of see how across this pi bond, you see how things are doing like a little zigzaggy pattern there. And so to, to be a little more uh, specific here, right, I'll put the hydrogens that are there as well. So if you were to think about me turning this and looking at it like we would a ring in terms, in terms of in terms of cis or trans, you'll see here that this benzene ring is on is on the opposite face of this benzene. So these are kind of set up to where they're trans. And if you see the same thing happens here, right, they still are kind of viewed as trans. However, when you look now at the bromines, you notice how one is a dash, the other is a wedge. Let me turn it to the side now. One is a dash and the other is a wedge. So they are anti to one another. So that's kind of like saying if you were to look at the Newman projection for these, Right, let's say that's my dot and that's my circle. So if you were to look at the Newman projection here, you would see uh, your benzene ring pointing straight up like this. Let's put my circle in the background. All right, so if it's a wedge, we've been saying it's to the right. So you see a bromine over here to the right. Now if you look at your circle, right, this is the opposite. So that means the bromine's over here on the circle, and your other benzene ring is pointing down here like this. So when we say anti-addition, if you look at those two bromines, right, they are anti to one another. So that's kind of where we're getting that term. Well, that is exactly where we're getting that term anti-addition. So if you want to know what's going on in terms of anti-addition or something else called sin-addition, right, that type of addition is when you add to the same side, right, um, but to know that, just kind of look for dashes and wedges. That'll tell you a lot. All right, and so mechanistically, what is happening here? Why are we seeing an anti-addition? If I'm going to be so specific as to talk about stereochemistry in my addition product, right, what's happening here mechanistically? So we want to kind of look. Um, if we take a look, I have, instead of drawing these benzene rings repeatedly, I just wrote pH for phenyl, right? So pH is just... pH is the same thing as saying that it's a benzene ring. Okay, so, all right. So anyway, so we do see, in this case, our pi bond is going to help this molecule act, or e steel bean, act like a nucleophile and attack a bromine. All right, and then we're going to break this bromine-bromine bond here. Now, when we see the pi bond attacking that bromine, we actually see this weird triangular shape uh, emerge in our intermediate here where we have a bromonium ion, right? So and now that I see that, you can't really read my writing. So bromonium, right? Bromonium ion. And that's just a bromine with a positive charge. All right, now when we when we see this form, the bromine that we broke off here is now a Br minus, right? So it's a it's an anion. So when it attacks, I, it's not by coincidence that I'm showing you this negative charge attacking from the underside, right? Because it's showing an anti-attack or an opposite side attack. So if so if the bromine is point so if this is the wedged bromine pointing up like this, right? That means that the other bromine is coming in from the bottom of it, right? So it's it's an anti-attack. All right, and so that's why we see specifically uh, this product here. Right, so that's the bromine that attacked from the bottom side, and that's the bromine that was a part of the bromonium ion before, right? So it was a wedge, it stayed a wedge, right? And so the other one is now opposite. And so one other thing to kind of pay attention to, and we saw this back in oh, uh, chapter four, maybe, um, where you could rotate these single bonds. And when we do that, 
I've moved this side of the structure. And so when you do that, you notice now the pH is is in plane down and the bromine has went from a wedge to a dash and we know that this has a plane of symmetry and this is specifically a meso compound right meso compounds are not optically active they do not rotate plane polarized light um, and also what we know from our <coughs> uh, lab manual is that this meso compound has a melting point of 200 of 238 degrees C Okay, 200 and that's a three. You can't see the three that well, but of 238 degrees C. Okay, so the question is, why is that important? Well, because if we thought about this in terms of not doing an anti-attack, but what if it did a sin attack? Right? What are we going to see happening here? Something very, very similar. Okay. So the first thing's going to happen. Our E still being that pi bond is going to act like a nucleophile, attack the bromine, and then break this bond. So we're still going to get that bromonium ion, all right? But now when we talk about the Br minus from before, instead of it attacking from the opposite side, it's going to attack from the same side. And what do you see happening here, all right? Now both bromines are wedged, all right? And then because we tried to keep this, you notice how we tried to keep the pH plain, plain pH stuff all in plain in the same way, how it does a zigzaggy way. Well, yet again, if we rotate this clockwise, what do we see? We see that uh, bringing this pH down in plane, the bromine, this bromine is no longer wedged, it is dashed, all right? And so this is no longer a meso compound. This is a diastereomer, which is optically active. And it tells us that the boiling point for our racemic mixture of these, of these products is going to be 113 degrees C right so a huge difference in melting point okay all right and so since we do not have um, a polarimeter for you to get the optical activity we're going to use the melting point to give us an estimate of what our product is okay so big things here right we talked about mechanistically that this reaction then when we when we do a bromine addition reaction like this to our pi bond across our pi bond it's an anti-attack and with bromonium in particular, we get this bromonium ion, this triangular shaped structure with a Br with a plus charge, and it does do the anti-attack, right? So one bromine is wedged, the other is dashed, okay? Um, and then, however, if it were a syn addition, which it is not, uh, we would see that in our product, both would be dashed or both would be wedged, okay? That would make it a syn addition, okay? Um, and then... Uh, lastly, looking at some things that you need to understand here, just based off of um, random notes from the from the lab. Um, <clears throat> bromine is a hazardous chemical, and so in all of these reactions, the primary waste container for for anything that has had bromine in it, whether it was the Br2 or it contains our brominated product in solution, that needs to go in the brominated waste container all right so brominated waste container um, our solid would go in a ziplock that would be proper properly marked bromination of e still being solid waste um, but pretty much we're looking at a lot of brominated solution waste okay um, and then from there one other thing uh, in the safety part it tells you do not wash the glassware with acetone after you finish this brominated lab, this bromination lab, acetone will produce what's called a powerful lacrimator. All right, um, hang on, let me find the word. Let me write the word for you. L A C H R Y M A T O R. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. All right, I do all the time. Um, but anyway, this lacrimator. Um, really, all this tells you is that it's something. Uh, think of tear gas, right? It 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 has a it produces a gas that causes your eyes to water all right so it's kind of like a tear gas all right and it does kind of smell a little funky too all right so anyway so that was one of the the big takeaways from this as well be careful what you're doing when you um when you were wa if you were to wash the glassware but since you're not in this regard you don't really have to worry about crying a lot okay you can just tell people you're a sensitive soul all right uh, so that concludes it for the pre-lab. Um, you can now take the pre-lab quiz.